So something I would notice when conducting live technical interviews as a hiring manager is that oftentimes people would just dive right into the code, not realizing that there's actually a lot of other things that we're looking for. And it's not really just perfect code. I wanted to share with you guys a framework that I teach that helps people nail their technical interviews and make sure that you're hitting on all of those other aspects so that you can really stand out. And at the end, I'll also go through some industry best practices that you should definitely make sure you're using. If you're new here, I'm Christine. I'm a former data director and hiring manager, and I'm also founder of the analytics accelerator program, which is a program for 20 ambitious aspiring data analysts who want to take the most lean path to working in data and feel confident on the actual job. All right. So I first want to start with what do interviewers actually look for? So what do we care about? What do we not care about? And then we're going to dive into the three C's framework when I'm going to teach you exactly the things that you should be saying throughout your interview. And then I'll leave you with what it actually takes to pass. And if you want to see me do a mock interview so that you can see the full end to end process and see what it looks like to pass with flying colors, then I'll let you know how to do that at the very end. So what do we actually look for? We don't care about things like having perfect code, small syntactical differences, or having typos, as long as there's not too many, of course, but we do care about things like seeing your code familiarity, and then also seeing your communication and your approach. Also, whether or not you use industry best practices, which I'm going to show you in a little bit, and also seeing your coachability and your adaptability. Now, I think most people obviously know this first thing, but not everyone knows that we're also looking for the last three bullets. I'm just going to talk about what it's like to actually code in SQL because this is the most commonly tested language for data analyst positions. Even if it says Python on the data analyst job, you probably will get tested in SQL over Python. For SQL, you should of course be familiar with things like the select statement from where group by limit and order by. And you should also know how to use things like aggregates, date functions, window functions, and also CTEs, which are better than subqueries, which I will also explain in a little bit. So now let's dive into the three C's where C stands for Christine. Just kidding. It stands for clarify, communicate, and code where the clarifying step means asking clarifying questions about the data set, the desired output, and any other areas of ambiguity. This actually shows your thoughtfulness and your logic when it comes to approaching these kinds of questions and also gives you the opportunity to actually start thinking through the question on the spot before you start coding. For the communication step, this is where you want to communicate how you would translate the question into code in plain English. And you would also mention the specific SQL function. This also gives you a little bit more time to think through the code and also gives you the opportunity to course correct with the interviewer in case you're misunderstanding anything about the question. Then for the code part, of course, you're going to write out your code. It might either be in a coding platform or it might be in something as simple as a word doc or even on pen and paper or a whiteboard, but that's not as common these days, but you want to be following the steps that you communicated earlier and course correcting where needed. When you're done coding, you want to give a quick summary of the query and ask if there's anything else that you should consider just so that the interviewer knows that you're pretty much done. I'm going to walk through an example using this schema and you might get the data set presented to you in this way or in an ERD, which is a diagram that shows the relationship between these tables. In this situation, I have three simple tables, a subscribers table, which has users in it, subscriptions, which has the different subscriptions in it, and then the products, depending on what product was actually purchased by that user. So for the clarifying step, you want to ask questions about the data, the intended output, and the definitions of any metrics or columns where it's ambiguous. So for data questions, output questions, and definitions questions, some things that you can possibly say are just to confirm is the grain of the table, the sub ID. And can I assume that there aren't any duplicates in this data set, right? So clarifying your understanding about how the data set actually works. Then for the output, in terms of the output, are you looking for, let's say, account of subscribers, group by month and country? So you know exactly how they want those results to be formatted and which columns they want returned. And then for definition, you mentioned we want the most popular product. Can I assume that we'll kind of, we're going to calculate the popularity by the number of subscribers, right? So anytime there's a metric or a term that's actually ambiguous, you want to make sure that you're on the same page with the interviewer about how they would actually like that to be calculated. This whole step should take you less than two or three minutes, right? You don't want to spend too much time on it, but you just want to show the interviewer how you are actually talking through this question. And there's two things to note here. Notice that I actually flexed a little bit of my data lingo. If you're not familiar with what data lingo is, check out my other video on that to show my familiarity with these data concepts. So in this case, I said, is the grain of the table, this unique identifier. And that actually shows my understanding about how data sets are set up. The other thing is that I asked using assumptions. I didn't just ask super open ended questions like what's the grain of the table. I actually asserted what my understanding of the table was so that that person already sees how far down the line my understanding of these data concepts are so they can assume that I'm already at an intermediate level of understanding. 
Okay, so then when it comes to the communication step, think of the interviewer as another data analyst on your team who you're explaining your code logic to as if you're pair programming. And you can either talk about your thinking before you start writing the code or just communicate it as you're coding, whichever you find easier. So I do recommend actually trying this out on your own before you do a live technical interview so that you have some practice and you see what works best for you. For the communication step, you wanna communicate along two different dimensions. So the logic and the output. For the logic, that's things like explaining each major clause or piece of logic in the query. So for example, it looks like I'm gonna to need to use the subscribers table and join that to subscriptions. Or I'll use a group by to aggregate the table by plan, and then I'm gonna filter the table to country. So I'm just using plain English to explain my logic here. And then for the output, state what the expected output looks like. So following the structure, my output should have three columns, one with the month, then the plan, and then the sub count. Is there anything else I should consider? Note here that this actually gives me an opportunity to course correct with the interviewer in case I'm actually on the wrong track. So that instead of looking like a mistake by the time I actually went to go code it, it actually just looks like strong and proactive communication. Genius, right? And then lastly, for the code part, you want to code using industry best practices. Now, these are things that are actually really important that I don't think a lot of coding platforms out there actually teach you. So formatting an indentation, having descriptive aliases, and then prioritizing CTEs over subqueries. And lastly, do not stay stuck. So when it comes to formatting indentation, this is how some people might write code, right? There's no indentation here. There's no capitalization. Instead, it would be preferred if you have enough time to write your code like this, where there's indentation for every new subline when that line belongs to the clause above and also use capitalization to just separate out those different clauses. For descriptive aliases, now a lot of coding platforms also teach you to initialize different table names. So for example, table one is O and table two is C. On the actual job, it's usually recommended to use more descriptive names so that we can be more explicit about what table we're using. So in this case, I do recommend just doing the same in your live technical interviews to show that you know that best practice. Now for subqueries and CTEs, a lot of platforms also teach you how to use subqueries, but realistically, we do tend to prefer CTEs over subqueries because the logic is easier to understand. So in this case, there's a subquery being used in the where statement. Instead, it's better to separate it out as a CTE. And even though the logic is a little bit longer, it's more easy to understand and read in chronological order, especially as you get to those longer CTEs and longer queries. So if you can, do try to use CTEs instead of a subquery in your live technical interview. Lastly, don't stay stuck. So be specific when you're asking for help and also clarify if you're using a different SQL dialect. So for example, asking something like, I forgot which date is supposed to come first in the date diff function. Is it the start date or the end date? That's much better than just asking an open-ended question like, I don't know how to subtract these two dates. So even if you know a little bit about a function, but you can't remember that last piece of syntax, it's okay to ask for help here. And then for the clarifying part, if you're used to using a different SQL dialect than what you're being tested in, you should probably state this so that the interviewer knows that you might be doing a little bit of translation. So I'm used to using Google SQL, which uses extract to get a specific date part. If extract doesn't work here, is there another function that I can use? Now, what does it take to actually pass? So if we look at what not passing is, that means not following the three C's. Let's say you just say silent, you just start coding immediately, and then you probably make multiple errors because you haven't clarified a lot of those things with the interviewer, and then you're not able to arrive at the correct answer or not able to finish about 50% of the questions. A solid pass is something like going through the three C's. You might make a few errors and need some help from the interviewer, and the answers are either all correct or pretty close to correct and able to get through 80% of the questions. And then passing with flying colors looks like going through the three C's without asking for syntactical help, answers are all correct and able to get through all of the questions. And just a note, when it comes to passing with flying colors, I've probably only seen like five to 10% of applicants that I've interviewed over the years actually get to this level. So don't stress yourself out too much thinking that you need to be perfect, more so aim for a solid pass by practicing the questions on Leeco, Data Lemur, especially the questions that have actual business application and apply the three C's framework to it. I'm really interested to hear how it is for you when you try this out. So do leave me a comment below for how this goes for you and if you have other questions. So as you guys can see, live technical interviews are a lot more than just writing code, which is why it's really important to actually practice this on your own. Open up a Zoom window, get used to what it actually feels like if there's someone watching you on video so that when you step into the actual interview, you're not as nervous and you've already broken that ice. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If so, leave me a comment below to let me know what you think. And also don't forget to subscribe. I looked at the metrics and about 77% of you guys are not subscribed. So make sure to subscribe if you wanna see the new video that I'll be putting out every single week and I'll see you in the next one.